Do you ever have a really cool idea like a chord progression, a drum beat, a melody or a vocal line, but then struggle to turn it into a full song arrangement? Well, if that sounds like you, you are not alone. Over the past four years of running my music production school, this is one of the biggest problems I get asked about time and time again. So today I'm going to share with you six simple steps you can take to turn your ideas into fully finished songs. It's worth noting that these techniques will work for any style of music and it doesn't matter which software you use either, so you could be using Ableton Live, FL Studio, Logic X, doesn't matter, these techniques will work for you. If you want, you can grab my free speed writing cheat sheet below this video, just click that link, it's helped thousands of producers finish their music over the last few years, and now some of them are even producing full time for a living, so it does work. And if you want tips like this every week, don't forget to hit that big fat red subscribe button, and without further ado, let's hop into the door, get it done. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is actually find the loop that we want to turn into a full song. So the way I organize things is if I go to my previous sessions, you can see I keep my ideas by year and then I can see uh, which ones I've worked on and then which ones are finished like this. But if you um, use a Mac, then you can actually tag things a color. So every year or so I'll go through and I'll listen to the different loops that I've made and then I'll just tag the ones that really work with a color. So here I've tagged them with purple for instance. So um, you know if we go into 2017 and then open up parallel lesson, uh, whatever that is, then we've got our idea. We can see if, see if it still sounds good, see if we want to continue with it and if we do then happy days. So let's have a quick listen. Okay so it was really based around this this little riff, just that loop. So I want to turn that into a full track. Now at this stage you can make a couple of decisions. You can think, okay, well is it just the chords that I like? Is it the sound that I like? Or is it both? Um, and then you can kind of change that idea into something else depending on what, um, what, it, what it says to you and how it speaks to you. So I'm going to keep this tempo, I'm going to keep these drums and stuff. Um, just for the sake of this exercise and I'm going to turn it into a full track so let's get cracking I would say that the first thing to do even when you come up with an idea is to work fast because if you can get an arrangement out and you get all the bits in even if they don't sound perfect having that uh, initial inspiration is what gives you the power to move forward so you can kind of get most of it done and then if you come back and do the mixing and mastering then that's okay but if you get the bulk of the idea down in one session that is absolutely key and that is essential to finishing your music. So I'm going to try and do that now here. So I've got this idea. What does it instantly say to me? Okay, well, breakbeat's kind of not cool at the moment. Um, but I like that idea because then it's going to sound different from everything else out there. So I'm thinking I want this to be a kind of pop track. So that is a good point, having an aim for what you want. So if you want this to be an eight-minute underground techno track, then you'll approach it that way. I want this to be like a three minute Spotify pop track that could be played on Spotify. Like when I listen to that, I'm thinking Jess Glynn vocals over the top, things like that. So um, that is the route that I'm going to go down. So I'm going to build out this loop before I turn it into a full arrangement because you've got this beat and you've got this little uh, riff, which is cool, but um, we need a bit more shuffle to that beat. So I'm just going to add a drum loop underneath it because I'm trying to build out what it's going to sound like at its kind of busiest point, if you will. So I'm going to just search through my loops and find something. Yep, that sounds cool. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage because we're trying to work quickly. But it does give it some, um, you know, some shuffle. And I've got these chords in my head that have kind of come to me as I'm listening to it. So the first thing to do, if you don't know music theory or you can't play the piano um, or guitar or whatever it is, is find out which key that you've written this in. Now, the way that you can do that is go into your uh, like your bass line, perhaps will be the easiest, actually, because then it's just one array of notes. 
um, and let's have a quick listen to that. So we want to determine what key this track is actually in. So it sounds like, like the root of the key, the, the home, the home of the song that sounds kind of most, yeah, m most natural is, it sounds like it's going to be G. And the way you do that is you, you can basically play, if you play the note, uh, the one note over the whole bass line and it still sounds okay, doesn't sound discordant, then it's uh, indicated that that's probably the home of the key that you're working in. Yeah, so it's G. Uh, so now we need to determine whether this is a key of G major or G minor. So the way that we can do that is go to G and write in all the notes of G minor. And if you want to know how to do that, you can click on the video that's there or there, and it shows you the intervals that you have in all major keys and all minor keys. And by interval, I mean the space between the notes, and it's very easy. So if you don't know any music theory, don't worry about it. Just check that out. You'll, you'll get it within five minutes. So these are the notes within the key of G minor. So I'm just going to duplicate them down an octave and I'm going to duplicate them up an octave. So we've got three octaves of the key of G minor natural. So I'm going to grab them all, move them to the side of the clip and then if I press fold in Ableton, the only notes sh now showing are within the key of G minor natural. So I can build chords from that very simply. So that is what I'm going to do. So um, I'm just going to call this I'm going to call this harmony instead of chords because I want to actually build some proper chords. Um, so I'm going to create a new MIDI track to write my chords. I'll turn off the harmony for the time being. And the way I'm going to write these chords is I'm going to copy the bass over there. I'm just going to change that to be called chords and color it in my chords color, which is going to be cyan. It's important to keep things organized so you can work quickly. And when you open up your project later on, you can see where you are and it's much easier to kind of get back into it without being overwhelmed. So I'm just going to color these correctly how I like to. Um, I'll just minimize those. And for the chords, I'm going to write them in a piano sound just because it's easy. So I'm just going to write piano uh, and all of whichever door you're using is going to have some kind of built in grand piano sound. And I like to do that uh, to write chords because um, then I don't get confused by the sound design and I can choose a different sound afterwards. So the way that we can write that is we've got fold. Um, if we press fold, all these notes showing now are only in the key of G minor natural. So to make chords, I can just put basically skip a note and then that will be the that will be a triad. But I'm going to move these up an octave because you can't really have ba bass notes low down. See, I'm just skipping one note each time when I'm using this template technique. And if you are not skilled at uh, music theory or playing piano, this is a great little trick to, to get chords written quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unfold and I'm going to move these last um, thirds, this minor third, to be a major third, just to make it a bit more interesting by moving it up a semitone and the last one too and I'm going to add seventh notes as well to give it a bit more of a jazzy feel just by skipping another note and moving it up 
I'll unfold because this note I'm going to hit isn't in the scale of G minor natural. Okay, so here is our chord progression so far. Let's have a listen. Actually, minor does sound better. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, rather than following the exact same pattern as the bass line, I'm going to hit those chords in different places. I'm going to start the bar with the chord. And I'm going to hit them just before the start of each bar, just to give it a bit of movement and rhythm. So you can see I'm just pulling them out, extending them. Let's move them up an octave. And before I choose a, an instrument for that, I'm going to add some vocals to it. Now you might send this track to a vocalist or you could sing yourself of course. But what I'm going to do as a placeholder is I'm going to open Splice. Um, you don't have to use Splice, but I find it a pretty cool way to find placeholder vocals quite quickly. And we already know that the tune that we're writing uh, is in the key of G minor natural, right? So all I need to do is write, say, vocals in my search, and then uh, you can choose which vocals. And these are all hosted online um, in Splice. Then I just put G minor and it doesn't matter if it's not the same tempo because we can very easily adjust the tempo. So the most important thing is getting the vibe right. I can't take you anywhere, anywhere. That's quite cool. You like the fireworks in the air. You're everywhere. Oh, I like that. Okay. See how quick it was. Um, so I'm just downloading this this vocal now. Um, and again, I can send the track to m m one of my singers and they can mute the vocals and sing their own. But this is just a way to get the song taken out into a full arrangement, which is what we need to do. So I'm going to drag that in to my track. Um, and let's see. And it tells me um, it's in G minor and it's 128 BPM, but obviously our track is 123 BPM. So I'm just going to turn warp off, turn it on again, choose complex pro because that's the best uh, warp mode in Ableton for the vocals and then manually put in one, two, eight. And then it will now be the correct tempo for our track. I can't take you anywhere. But I don't want it starting there. I'm just going to move it manually to where I want it. And I'm doing this visually by looking at the um, the transients in the waveform here, so they line up with the beginning of that bar. I can't take you anywhere, anywhere. You like the fireworks in the air. So I'm just going to now loop my musical loop twice because that's how long the vocal is. 
Nice. Okay, so that is the kind of basics of, of our track. So next I'm going to just quickly choose a sound that inspires me, that actually excites me um, with uh, for the chords. So I'm just going to consolidate that so it's all nice and in the place that I want. So we've got our vocals, we've got our chords. I can't take you anywhere. Just turn these down a bit. Just reorder them the way I like. So in terms of the chords, I'm, I want some kind of pad. So I'm going to load in a synth. I'm going to use silence, but it doesn't matter which one you use. Just use your stock synthesizer. It's absolutely fine. Of course, you've got Serum, you've got Reactor, all sorts of synths. Um, I'm just going to use silent because this is the one that I use most. I'm most used to using it. And that's the only reason um, I'm going to go to find some presets. Let's see some that come with it. And I'm just going to scroll through some of them and um, yeah, have a listen basically until I hit something that inspires me. Ooh, computery. Okay, well that's in the wrong key, so that's strange. I can't take you anywhere, anywhere. Oh, okay, this is probably not the best preset pack. I don't know what they've done there. Okay, that's nice, you know, it's nice big saw wave. So I'm just going to tweak the uh, patch very slightly. So it's not so sustained. So how is that so far, guys? Let me know in the comments below. Is there anything that's not clear? Anything you've got questions about? Drop a comment below and I will reply. Right now, before we uh, do the mixing and all that, I need to get um, an arrangement to this done as soon as possible. Now, there are a few different ways that you can arrange tracks. There are some common um, track arrangements. So a few of these track arrangement structures would be things like intro, first verse, first chorus, second verse, second chorus, middle eight, third chorus. That would be a really common and popular song arrangement for pop music. But you do get some other arrangements as well. So I'm going to actually just download a pop song and I'm going to map out the arrangement really quickly using my um, ghost writing, uh, my ghost track technique. So all I'm going to do and you don't need to follow this specifically if you've got a reference track. You don't need to copy its structure exactly. You know, if the song demands something else, then obviously do that. But it's a good way to start because you can't just repeat this loop, um, you know, for the next three or four minutes because it's going to get boring and people will be like, well, what's going on? Obviously, you want everything coming in on the choruses. I can't take you anywhere, and I'll have to change anywhere. some of these sounds. because obviously uh, they're not perfect, but as I said, working quickly is really important. So let's get the structure down. I'm just gonna open up my iTunes and I'm gonna drag in a reference track that's in a similar genre. I, I, I mentioned a Jess Glynn. I'm just gonna drag that into my door. Again, it doesn't matter which door you're using. And then it's important to make sure that I get the tempo matching my track. So the way I'm gonna do that is switch on the metronome and just have a listen first make sure that the track is playing from the very first transient it sounds like it's 123 anyway so that's perfect let's test by fast forwarding 
Yeah, so the track's 123 BPM. In case we do want to change the tempo of our track, I'm just going to warp this anyway. So now what we can do is just map out the structure of this Jess Glynn track roughly, quickly, and then we've got our structure. Let's just um, label it first. Okay, so we can hear that that's where the first chorus is. So I'm just going to go chorus one. Versus verse two. That means this is verse one. Intro, intro. That's like a bridge or pre-chorus. Let's call it pre-chorus. Pre-chorus two. Chorus two. Okay, this will be the middle eight. So this is pretty much the exact structure I just described to you. And then the last chorus there. Lovely, well done Jess. Okay, so let's quickly map our track out to be, to, to be like that. I can't take you anywhere, anywhere. Do I want this to be the chorus? And then we've got the post chorus here as well, which is where she kind of sings on a, a bit longer. So we could have that in ours. Let's just say that this is going to be our chorus then. I can't take you anywhere, anywhere. You like so for the verse, we might just have the bass line and the beats. but maybe not the 808 bass. Remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a rough arrangement at the moment. Let's just call that harmony. And don't worry, we will be adding sweeps and things like that to, to make it more interesting. But the intro, we are just going to have... <clears throat> see, so this is a bit of a long intro. I'm just going to delete it because we don't need it that long for our tune. So we are just going to have this as the intro, the chords. Whoops, didn't, didn't delete enough. It's good to work in blocks of four or eight. That's how songs are structured. Let's see how that sounds an octave down. Nice. So this would be the verse, and if I sent this to a vocalist or I was going to sing myself, then I could kind of ad lib over this. Now as we go into the pre-chorus, we can build the song slightly. And then just before the drop, and then everything will come in here. I can't take you anywhere, anywhere. You like the fireworks in the air. I'm just going to copy and paste the second bus. And for the second uh, part of the chorus, the post chorus, I'm just going to add a little riff and I'm going to jam along to this. Now I know which key this is in. It's in G minor. So if I'm not um, a skilled pianist, which I'm not a skilled pianist, but I can play a little bit. But if you if you can't play any piano at all or any guitar at all, what you can do. I'm going to link to how you can actually write a melody with no music theory whatsoever. You just kind of hum it in and then you can trace it. But for this example, I'm just going to jam along in the key of G minor um, and write, write, write some kind of riff that I feel is um, suitable for this tune because I've got one that keeps coming up in my head. 
I'm just going to find a very simple sound. Um, in fact, I might just initialize the patch so it's just a... That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use a saw wave and assign some pitch bend. I'm just going to add some legato and some portamento, I mean. And it's going to sound nice with some reverb on it too. As you can hear, even I'm just experimenting, you know, um, because this key has got lots of black notes in it. So, so actually, I'm going to show you how you can do it because um, I'm obviously being a bit rubbish at playing along anyway. So, let's see. What what you do is basically the same template technique. So you can draw in all the notes of the key of G minor. Obviously, you just copy them because you've already written them out. So I'm just going to move those aside now when I press fold, it's all the key of uh, G minor naturals. So let's get a little riff in. And remember, I can't go wrong if I only use these notes. And I'm just going to copy that for repetition, so it's a pop song, so you need it to be uh, nice and uh, memorable. Just really quick, and then I'm going to extend them all so you can hear the portamento as it sweeps between the notes. And I'm just going to copy that and paste it. Okay, so that is kind of the, the basic idea. And now we go into the next verse, which you might have a break in, as we do if we listen to our reference track. Okay, no, they don't have a break. So we'll just follow that for the time being. So we go back to the verse. And imagine there'll be a singer singing over the top here as well. This is very simple, you know, it's like four chords, chord progression. So this second uh, verse is longer. So what we're going to do is have a break for this second pre-chorus because obviously these beats have been going long enough. So you'd have a build up here, and then we go into the second chorus, same as the first one.
And then we've got our middle eight here, which we could experiment with soon. And we might just do that by changing the instrument um, of the chords. Or you could change the chords slightly as well. Um, so there is basically our basic arrangement and structure. You know, it hasn't taken long, and yes, there's a lot more work to do. But now if we open this project up again in the future, we know, you know, everything's organized. We know where we are. It's kind of labeled. Uh, the colors are right. I'm just going to color this the way I like to color the, the riff color too. Um, and we've got something to work from, so we're not being completely confused. And it's important um, to kind of mix a little bit as you go as well, but to work as quickly as possible, basically. So now what I would do is I would listen to this through and I would make changes as I go. So I don't, I don't think... I think the intro shouldn't have this. Right, and to go into that song, we are going to have a, just a reverse effect um, to lead in, to, to, to get, let you know that the first beat's coming. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to get some more vocals actually. Just again as a placeholder, um, I'm going to find some more vocals in the same key. Then we've got some chorus vocals and then we've got some verse vocals. Now obviously if your idea is actually just having, um, if your idea is actually a song idea, then you'll already have these vocals. Um, so, but if you are just working from an instrumental idea, this is a nice way to get some ideas for placeholders. So we go G minor. Let's see what we've got. Vocals. And I, Ooh, I just It's about time to react. See that's a that's a nice little um kind of atmosphere that we could have behind in the chorus because it again it makes it bigger. So let's just download that and we drag that in. Again, same thing. <clears throat> what tempo is that? What it's 126. So if we turn off warp, turn it back on again, choose complex pro, manually put in one, two, six, it's in G minor, turn it down a bit. Now when our chorus hits, it's like this. And we want to add a bit of size to the vocals, so I'm just going to um, add some reverb in the AUX channel. I've already got one there. So you can see it's rough, but it's getting there, it's taking its shape. Now we've only been doing this, what, for, you know, 30 minutes or so, so maybe a bit more. Uh, you can see how you can quickly take an idea, revitalize it by using this ghost track technique. Um, and yeah, that is how you can take a loop to a full song. And I just continue down this path, basically, uh, until it's ready for the mixing stage. So let's take this vocal, and this is going to be our little hook. So I'm just going to press R and reverse it, and this is going to be how we intro into the first verse. Just turn it down a bit. You know, so if we were to have the same, well, let, let's just take our, uh, our chorus vocals as the first verse, and you'll get an example of what the intro might sound like. And then to add interest, this is where using automation comes in. So you can use filters and volume automation. 
to create dynamics in your tune. So if this is the pre-chorus, you know, it can be a good uh, thing to do to put a gain plugin or a trim plugin. I'm just going to use the utility. Now, I never automate the actual channel faders because if you do automate them and you want to change the balance of levels later, then you have to edit all of the automation nodes. And this is a real pain. So please, please do all of your automation with a gain plugin. Um, whoops, I just created another um, open channel there. So if you can see just before the break, uh, sorry, just before the, the main chorus, I'm just bringing the the volume down. This is one technique of many that you can use. So the bass is going to be dropping in volume. You can do this. You can do this the same for the drums and the the, the loop as well. So you can see they're just being automated down. And the other technique you can use is a filter. So um, again, you can always go back and edit these later, but in terms of getting ideas down quick, this is uh, a great way. So I'm just gonna call that low pass filter, show automation, and we'll have it open to its fullest on the chorus, but for the verses, we will have it lower. Like this. And you can even have less reverb in the um, in the verse if you want on the vocals. So we are going to bring these chords back in for the the pre-chorus, and they are going to build into the chorus like this. So here's an example, and again, this is really quick. I'm just going to automate the reverb off for the first section and just have it come in in the uh, chorus I can't take you anywhere anywhere you like the fireworks in the air you're everywhere Obviously, we've got the same vocals for the verse and the chorus, so it's not ideal. But you can um, hopefully get the impression of how you can... Well, right, let's see if there's anything I haven't co covered that I, I wanted. I mean, yeah, if you're, if you're going to do any kind of slight mixing, just be as simple as, oh, let's listen to the harmony. Oh, we've got bass frequencies that we don't really need. We just filter them out. And keep the keep the mixing as simple as that when you're trying to get the arrangement done because it's as the speed is of the essence here. So there you have it, guys. You now have some solid tips for turning your ideas into full arrangements. If you like this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking that big red subscribe button. It really helps me out when you do that. And don't forget to download your free step-by-step -step song arrangement guide by clicking that link below this video. Until next time, thanks for watching. Cheers and happy producing. Oh.